What is up, guys? And of course, welcome to our first post narrated Wi Fi battle in Pokemon Sun and Moon and Generation 7, of course. And we're going up against, of course, the glorious and oh so dangerous Eric or Ash Nakai. Make sure to check out his channel, he will start uploading Wi Fi battles next week. This one, of course, included. Having that said, uh, I've been very firm with that I'm not gonna use or try to go all powerful with UBs and stuff like that. I do have top of bolo in this team, but outside of that, I tried my very best to avoid these, well, a bit more stronger Pokemon because I do want to try different things out without being limited, you know, what I would consider pretty stale meta at this moment. So we'll go to Token Amaro, uh, Golisid Pod, Ninetales, Alola Marowak, Tapu Bulo, and of course Sand Slash. Guess my sweeper for team. Um, Token Amaro is actually awesome, consider that it actually is able to deal with. Um, um, Zuxi Tree really well, and that's the main reason it's here, together with actually Lola Marowak. Uh, having that said, we're going to get Machomp, Tapu, Koku, Toxic Peck, Metagross, Arcanine, and Dolmice. And uh, yeah, uh, a fair warning here is that it's a bit choppy at parts here in this video, and it's due to that I'm actually uh, was recording a bit of high of a frame rate, which clearly my computer did not like. Don't worry, next uploads will not be as choppy, but I'm feeling that I have to say it even though it's not that bad. But I feel like it's worth mentioning. Uh, I'm going to predict Eric to lead off with the Tapu Bulo, so I'm going to start off with my Togo tomorrow. So, really with all this said, let's get into the game. By the way, and notice when I record this that the game is actually clearly slower than the previous game, of course, which means that I have sped up this game even though you barely, barely won't notice it, hopefully. Anyway, he started with, of course, Machomp, and that's not ideal. He can just spam free love, of course, Dynamic Punch, and I know that. Tapu Bolo is my only switch in here, and U-Turn does not do a whole lot. I should say Togemaru is a scoff set mainly because it's just not that speedy. So Tapu Bolo is gonna come in, you're gonna set off the grass to search as uh, here's the Dynamic Punch. The thing is here, I usually run Bandit variant, but this time I wanted to try the Sword Stand set with, of course, Horn Leech. And I do believe that this far on me because I really would have needed this extra power versus, of course, the likes of Arcanine. So I have Horn Leech and Stone Edge with Swole Stance and Taunt. I wanted Substitute, I lacked the TM, so you know, I roll with it. So basically, Taunt is there for Toxic Pack. Uh, having that said, he's gonna switch out, of course, going to Flare Buddy. I do believe I directly go for Horn Leech. Uh, just pretty much, I really needed to get some damage off in case he wanted to lock himself into, of course, that. Um, Dynamic Punch trying to outmaneuver me, and Horn Leech does a respectable amount of damage. I do believe that's around 20%, which kind of tells me that at least it's not a defensive area because I'm at minus one and I do so much damage. But then I see the leftovers, so I was thinking, all right, it might be specially defensive. Um, at this point, I really don't want to risk it. I need to be at plus one to kill it with a Stone Edge. Uh, so I decided, all right, I, I tried to do this another time. I'm going to switch in my Lolan Marowak mainly to be able to outmaneuver him as he goes back to Machomp, so a nice play of Eric's side as I'm gonna stay in here actually go for a Will-O-Wisp due to Togedemaru of course taking Tapu Koko on. Marowak is not insanely important in this battle and I would really really appreciate to of course take away his uh, punching power. So will is gonna come through here, awesome to see Marowak pulling this up, really like that defensive responsive at the same time that I kinda realize as we go through here that I really can't do much else here now, can I? And uh, Knockup clearly did a lot of damage, so I'm pretty sure this thing is Scarfed. Uh, or I mean, Assault Vistid. So I'm gonna go back to Tapu Bolo because I really, really have no other switching. As the second Knockup is gonna land, and this is gonna do pretty much nothing now. So I have a clear opportunity to set up a possible Sword Stance, if I so desire that is. And the thing is here, Machomp is definitely ruined. So I was figuring maybe he wanna Sack Kick, you know, he has the opportunity to go for the Dynamic Punch. Kinda ruin my possible Sword Stance. But at the same time, you know, it's good setup fodder, so I'm just gonna go for that Sword Stance and really, really hope that he stays in. Uh, as it goes for a Poison Jab, and that was like, oh, damn, I totally forgot about that. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it does score the Poison on me, which set up, of course, the train wreck that is, shit, this is not gonna work for me. And I'll figure in that he probably has Bullet Punch, which means that I can't set up now. I'm, I'm pretty much screwed from this point on. So he's going to Flare Bud here. As um, I tried to remember whether or not I stayed in. Oh, yeah, I went for Horn Leech. I actually did attack him. Kind of scary. Horn Leech does a plethora of damage, really. And um, at this point, I didn't want to risk it. I was pretty sure Extreme Speed would take me out, which kind of 
and we go in that you know I have to switch out, I have to do something else to try to outmaneuver me, not lose top of Bulo right now. So I go to Furion as he goes directly for the Morning Sun, and this time I'm like, oh damn, I missed that. I could have stone edged him, I could have ruined him, but no, that is not what happens. As I'm just gonna lose, of course, my Merrick right here. And it's unfortunate, but at the same time, there were only so many plays I could do there. And I think Eric really played a very risky game there. Um, actually going for, of course, the Morning Sun with that in mind, how much damage I did on it. So I'm gonna go to Dust Bite. The thing is here, I can actually be forced out to go for Flare Blitz. So I have a nice opportunity here. If it attacks me, I still get to switch momentum. As he's gonna go to Yvonne, as we go for Liquidation. Liquidation will do just about nope. Because it's a toxic pack. It it's it's a no Pokemon, basically was what I'm trying to say. As I have no real good switch in here outside of, of course Tapu Bulo. So all I really can do is try to get some HP back, try to set up against this thing, and uh, mainly sacking it is what's what's my point here, but I was really trying to bait in the Arcanine. Because after seeing Morning Sun, I was pretty sure that I was gonna be able to outspeed and um, I already got decent damage on it, and since Hortley did pretty much 50%, I'm pretty sure Stone Age will kill, so that was a risk I was willing to take. There is no way in hell, after he saw Sword Stance, that he will try to uh, stay in with this one. It's very clear that it would be a very, very, very crazy game to pull that off. So it goes directly, of course, to Arcanine as I go for the Sword Stance. Damn, I I'm telling you guys, I spent it up, what, 30%, it still feels kind of slow to narrate, so... Sorry if I'm kind of, if I repeat myself, as uh, at this point here, of course, like I said, I'll try to go over Stone Edge, and uh, I'm not gonna lie here, I did not take into consideration that he might as well be Jolly, and oh my god, he is. I am Jolly too, so I was pretty sure that, you know, he could have been an adamant impish variant, but no, 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 he's a offensive Arcanine with, I don't know. So this this had me definitely shocked. Is what would be the right word because it did so much on me. So I'm just gonna go to Arsenic. Here's the thing: I only have one attack, and that's zigzag. I'm going to go for the flinch. That's my only play, and it's beautiful. Oh my god! I I I I don't know what to say. Arsenic or Togedemaro, thank you for that. I clearly needed something to open up the game, as he's going to Rusty Ankle, and. Um, it's untouchable, is what I'm trying to say here with the, my Toge Tomorrow. Toge Tomorrow do have, uh, actually lacks a proper steel stab, so I can't touch this guy. I really need to switch out, and I'm actually gonna switch into my Colissipod, uh, uh, hoping that with poison in mind and possible damage that he does on me, that I can stay in at least for a while to go for um, a leech life, because I will be able to have speed. And Earthquake does not do anything on me, clearly. Um, which is awesome. Clearly I needed something like that. I know Toxipec is always going to be the switch in. So after a few after I thought about it, I was like, nope, I had to switch out. Ninetales probably is the better switch in. Toxipec is going to come in as he goes for Power Whip. And the thing is here, I'm not gonna lie. He misses it, which is super, super lucky for me. But at the same time, what the hell? He was not in a good position with, of course, a Golisipod, mind you, with Leech Life, which just could ruin him. But no, he does the risky play, and it almost paid off. It almost did pay off. Had he landed that, my Ninetales would be dead. So anyway, at this point, I was considering Freeze Dry. But I was thinking he knew Freeze Dry is going to ruin his Toxic Pack. As he switched in Toxic Pack, I was like, okay, okay, I see. I see. So I'm not scared about Toxic Pack because the only thing it can do is Baneful Bunker and, you know, recover maybe. So I'm free to go for, of course, free Stride, just checking out the damage output, which is clearly the only thing I had have in my mind. As um, free Stride does not do as much as I was hoping for. It does do a good chunk of damage and he goes with Toxic Spikes over, of course, uh, a recovery to checking out the damage. So I am able to kill him next turn, which is great. But I'm not in a good position. Because he has switch in, I can't touch his Metagross, which has of course been laying dormant for quite some time now. And now finally I feel that like that's probably the time for him to switch that in. As I'm gonna go for Arsenic, hoping that that is exactly what he does. As he goes to Charlie, that's a Metagross. And all I really can do here is actually, or all I'm going to do is actually try to U-turn on this guy and see what it is. 
and it's a Mega Metagross. And at this point, all of us being like, okay, the game is over. You know, I tried. It was it was fun while it lasted. A Mega Metagross is now in the field. It's over. There is nothing redeeming quality coming from this. I can't touch this guy. So I'm just gonna bring Dustbite. All I'm hoping is that whatever happens, I can take the hit and not that the poison pushes me over. But no. While I do survive the earthquake without going for 50%, the toxic will push me over. So I don't get the first impression of making my emergency exits, of course, backfire on me, as I can at least reset the hail, uh, which is clearly all I need now, because now it's time for Sandslash to do something and do something fast, because I am getting 6 0 there. I cannot touch the gross. So I gotta bring Dustbite yet again back in. Uh, all I really wanted to do here is hope that he goes for Bullet Punch, which he does. Uh, we soak that because we know we still have a list about And I'm, actually, all I'm gonna do go for a first impression, damage him so much so that Sand Slash can pretty much sweep freely. And uh, yeah, as we go, look at this first impression. You know that's damage. That is damage on the grows. It's damage on the grows, which is so unfortunate that I do so much damage because I was forced up with emergency exit before that. Because it was very, very likely that Golisabot would have been able to, of course, kill this Metagross alone there. But anyway, gonna go to Juventol, which of course be in this Lowland Sand Slash, or as we call him, the Ice Slash. Uh, I should have gone for a Sword Stance here. I was actually stretch playing a little bit here because Earthquake was feeling like the best play at the time. But really, what could that, of course, Monsters Metagross do to my Sand Slash with, of course, this Hail in mind? And the sad part with me saying that is that, sadly, Icicle Crash is not enough to kill this rusty ankle. Had I gone for a sword stance, it would have been ruined. Demise would have met his demise, but no, that is not what happens. And this is real unfortunate. Earthquake will not kill me though, but I do miss out on a pretty big opening that the Alolan Sand Slash could have pulled up because now I lost so much HP that I am in a bullet punch range Meaning that Metagross is as frustrating as ever. And that, my people, is a very, very unfortunate turn of events. Having that said, I do go for Earthquake here over the other move, mainly because I thought that maybe he would try to save this one, and that was pretty much a better neutral play, in case it went for Arcanine or anything like that, because Arcanine, of course, in lack of better words, does deal with my stabs. Now, of course, Tapu Cuckoo is gonna come in, and all I was thinking is, alright, my best play here is to sack my Ninetales, reset the hail, because I kind of need that residual damage. It's more frustrating for my opponent than it is for me, because his Pokemon is actually starting to get whittled down, and Sandslash looking just more and more prominent as he goes for Volt Switch. And this had me believe in that only one thing and one thing only. He is probably not aware of the Lightning Rod on Token tomorrow, because that was a risky play. I was thinking that he's gonna showcase, you know, Brave Bird or uh, some kind of hidden power. He does not show that. Bringing in Arcanine though kind of forces me not to play, of course, the Sand Slash card, as I can lock myself into Sig Sap or Siggy Sappy or whatever that move, the flinch move that is Togedemaru's signature move, uh, Sing Zap. I tried to remember that one, and it does a lot of damage on the <laughs> top of Coco. And all I was thinking there, please, Eric, please. Do it! Go for Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, do whatever. As he goes for Thunderbolt, activate my Lightning Rod, I'll think, alright, we might just pull this off. The thing is here, his Arcanine cannot take a hit from Togi tomorrow, and I outspeed it due to, of course, me being Scarfed, and his Mega Metagross will not be able to take a Sing save from Togi tomorrow because, as I said, I am Scarfed. It's all gonna boil down to one thing, and one thing only, and that is, can we flinch? The Machomp. If we flinch the Machomp, we win the game because I can't care away from this range, sadly. And I have no switch in here, of course. And my champion is gonna come in, the Burned Champ. And I will say this Sing Zang is doing a lot of damage. Ashnik, my Togemaru, does super fair this game, but sadly, we do not get the flinch. And that, my people, is sadly GG. In, of course, my opponent's favor, Eric, which played a really, really mighty game. But, of course, I feel like he had a stronger team between us two, and I was so close of bringing the glory back to me. Because I do think I played a better late game process, definitely. Uh, and had I, of course, with Marowak gone for Flare Blitz instead of, of course, Willowisp against the Machamp, 
I probably would have won this game. Sally does not play out like that, and I do believe Eric made the best plays possible in the beginning. He definitely threw me back. And while I did find my way back, I probably didn't do all the ideal plays, and I do believe missing out on Sword Stance versus Metagross with Sand Slash was probably my last chance of actually winning this game in the end. Relying on flinches are just not that, well, professional, and quite honestly, had I won by flinch, we pretty much know who was, would be the right winner anyway, right? Alright, so, to the afterthoughts. Well, while it's, like I said, a trio victory, I'm pretty darn close to actually winning this one, and I did not think I would even come close to a possible victory with that team in mind. I mean, like I said, once I saw Mega Metagross evolving, I was like, yeah, it is over. He had that all this time and never used it? My god, what a deal breaker. I mean, that is... Ooh. <laughs> but having that said, I feel that I do a pretty smart game here in the end. I'm not ready for the momentum change with, of course, Sad Slash getting things done. And I'm not ready for, of course, either, either Togo tomorrow just pretty much pushing whatever things that could get pushed at that end. So I'm extremely satisfied with the way I played. I do believe I miss out on a few key plays and I do lose the battle due to it. But at the same time, I do believe it's a very fair outcome. And in the end, you know, it was all about having fun. And my God, did I have just that. And also, how do you guys like, of course, a possible, a regular sad slash in, of course, this format. I really just wanted to shift the colors like that. Yeah, I like it. Don't we'll deny it. Uh, but with that said, guys, thank you, of course, so much for watching. Don't forget, of course, um, responding to the course question of the day. And with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.